Guitars are ancient and noble, with a 4,000-year heritage. Many ideas exist about the instrument's ancestry. Many say the guitar is a derivative of the lute or the ancient Greek kithara. Dr. Michael Karsha's 1960s research disproved these assertions. He established that the lute developed separately from the guitar, sharing shared forebears but not influencing its evolution. On the other hand, the guitar's immediate ancestors shaped the fretted lute from the fretless oud the Moors brought to Spain. The only evidence for the kithara idea is the similarity between kithara and kitara. It is difficult to comprehend how the guitar evolved from the kithara, a square-framed lap harp or lyre. An early Spanish for string kitara, named after a square-framed seven-string lap harp would also be odd. Dr. Karsha asks whence the Greeks obtained the word kithara, and notes that the first Greek kitharas had only four strings when they were brought from overseas. He believes the Greeks Hellenified charta from Persian. The Ancestors the earliest stringed instruments archaeologists know are bowl harps and tanbers. Bowl harps have been built with tortoise shells and calabashes as resonators, a bent stick for a neck, and gut or silk strings since prehistory. Many Sumerian, Babylonian, and Egyptian harps are in museums worldwide. Advanced harps like Queen Shub Ad's tomb's 11 string gold decorated instrument appeared around 2500, 2000 CE. Tanbers are a long-necked stringed instrument with a small egg or pear-shaped body, arched or round back, usually with a wood or hide soundboard and a long, straight neck. The tanber apparently evolved from the bowl harp's straighter neck to allow additional notes to be played. Egyptian tomb paintings and stone carvings show harps, tanbers, flutes, and drums playing in ensemble 3,500, 4,000 years ago. Egyptian wall painting, Thebes, 1420 BCE. Many identical artifacts have been discovered at the ruins of Persian and Mesopotamian civilizations as well. Folk instruments from the region, such as the Turkish saz, Balkan tamburitsa, Iranian setar, Afghan panchtar, and Greek buzuki, are examples of musical instruments that have persisted until contemporary times virtually unmodified. The best vintage guitar is 3,500 years old. It belonged to Egyptian singer Ha Mos. His tanbur was buried near his employer, Sen Mut, architect to Queen Hatshepsut, who was enthroned in 1503 BCE. Sen Mut, who may have been more than the Queen's top minister and architect, erected Hatshepsut's exquisite mortuary temple on the Nile. Harmosus has three strings and a rope suspending the plectrum from the neck. A leather soundboard adorned the polished cedarwood soundbox. Today, the Cairo Archaeological Museum displays it. What is a guitar, anyway? We need a definition of a guitar in order to tell it apart from other tanbur instruments. Guitars, according to Dr. Karsha, are characterized by their long, fretted neck, flat wooden soundboard, ribs, and flat back, all of which are often straight across the middle. At Alaka Huyuk in Turkey, a 3,300-year-old Hittite guitar with a long fretted neck, flat top, probably flat back, and with strikingly incurved sides, is carved into stone. This carving is the earliest known iconographic representation of an instrument with all the basic qualities of a guitar. The lute, alud, oud. The Moors brought oud to Spain. In Arabia, the tanbur changed dimensions and remained fearless. Europeans added frets to the oud and dubbed it a lute, from Arabic alud, meaning the wood via Spanish lord. A lute or oud is a short-necked instrument with many strings, a large pear-shaped body with highly vaulted back, and an elaborate, sharply angled peg head. Renaissance Lute by Arthur Robb It's hard to imagine how the guitar, with a long, fretted neck, flat wooden soundboard, ribs, and a flat back, most often with incurved sides, evolved from the lute, which had short neck with many strings, large pear-shaped body with highly vaulted back, and elaborate, sharply angled peg head. The guitar. The term, ta, from ancient Sanskrit meant string, hence the name, guitar. This is the ancestor language to the languages spoken in Central Asia and Northern India. Archaeological findings have demonstrated that Central Asians have continued using stringed folk instruments virtually unmodified for thousands of years. Many have titles that culminate in, ta, followed by the amount of strings they contain. Indian sitar. 
The Indian sitar almost certainly took its name from the Persian setar, but over the centuries the Indians developed it into a completely new instrument, following their own aesthetic and cultural ideals. Cha-tar, ta. Harps and tanvers traveled the ancient world with merchants, sailors, and explorers. When the narrow wasted, for stringed Persian chartar was imported to Spain, it underwent some structural modifications, gained pairs of unison tuned strings, and was renamed the kitara or chitara. From four, to five, to six string guitar. Egyptian and Mesopotamian forebears brought the guitar to Europe. As mentioned above, guitar comes from the old Persian chartar, which means for strings. These early instruments usually had four strings. Medieval illustrated texts and stone carvings in churches and cathedrals from Roman times to the Middle Ages show many similar instruments with three to five strings. Roman guitar circa 200 CE. Most of Europe played the four course for unison tuned pairs of strings guitar by the Renaissance. Sometimes a single first string was used. The first four course chitara music was written in 16th century Spain. Around the same time, Italy introduced the five-course guitara batente, left, which superseded the four-course instrument. The usual tuning was A, D, G, B, E, resembling the modern guitar's top five strings. Early guitars, like lutes, had necks with less than eight frets, but as they evolved, they gained ten and ultimately twelve frets. Five-course guitar by Antonio Stradivarius, 1680. The Italian guitara batente gained a sixth course of strings in the 17th century, and guitar builders across Europe followed suit. After six courses, six single strings were used, and again, the Italians seemed to be in charge. The six-string guitar developed from the 12-string, not vice versa as is sometimes claimed. Some five-course instruments were adapted to use six single strings during the switch from five to six. This was easy because it simply required changing the nut and bridge and filling for tuning peg holes. This was done on an elaborate guitar by hamburger Joachim Thielke, 1641-1719. This instrument has only eight body-free frets. Starting in the early 19th century, the modern guitar emerged. The bodies were still tiny and narrow-waisted. Six-string guitar by George Louis Panormo, 1832. Around 1850, Spanish craftsman Antonio Torres enlarged the guitar's body, reshaped its proportions, and created the revolutionary, fan, top-bracing design, ushering in the contemporary, classical, guitar as we know it today. His innovation dramatically enhanced the instrument's volume, tone, and projection, and it quickly became the de facto standard. To this day, it has not been seriously challenged and has stayed mostly intact. Guitar by Antonio Torres Jurado, 1859. Steel string and electric guitars. German immigrants to the United States, like Christian Friedrich Martin, were creating guitars with X-braced tops around the same time as Torres was making his groundbreaking fan-braced guitars in Spain. Around the year 1900 was when steel strings first became commercially available. However, the increased tension of steel strings was too much for the Torres-style fan-braced top negating the promise of significantly louder guitars. A strengthened X-brace proved up to the task, and it soon became the standard for flat-top steel string guitars. Orville Gibson began making his signature oval sound hole arch-top guitars around the turn of the last century. He combined the steel string guitar sound with a body designed after a cello's, in which the bridge doesn't twist the top but instead presses straight down. Because of this, the top can vibrate with greater ease, yielding louder results. Lloyd Law, a designer who had joined Gibson in the early 1920s, was responsible for the iconic look of the F-hold, floating bridge, and cello-style tailpiece on archtop jazz guitars. Adding pickups to Hawaiian and jazz guitars in the late 1920s birthed the electric guitar, but it didn't take off until Gibson released the ES-150 model, made famous by Charlie Christian, in 1936. The sound box was eventually rendered obsolete by the development of amplification technology. Several performers were engaged in similar endeavors in the 1930s and 1940s, and to this day it is debatable whether Les Paul, Leo Fender, Paul Bigsby, or O.W. Appleton built the first solid-body guitar. The solid-body electric guitar, however, was not going anywhere. 
Remember, the guitar is not just an instrument, it's a storyteller, a symbol of human ingenuity, and a source of inspiration for generations to come. So keep strumming, keep exploring, and keep the music alive. Until next time.